From the East Coast to the West Coast, we are everywhere true crime is. We are asking for the public's help. We are searching in the woods. We are doing what it takes here on the Bullhorn Betty channels to find answers to the most alarming cases we have been watching on the news. I can tell you personally that I have traveled this entire country seeking these answers and bringing that content right here to you here on the Bullhorn Betty channels and Bullhorn Betty crime stories. We are happy with the work that we've done. We brought many answers to the public and we have defied mainstream media in our pursuit of the truth in these cases. We will continue to work we will continue to fight for these victims and we will continue to tell their stories here on my channels. Welcome to the Bullhorn Betty brand of channels and the Coffee Club. Thank you for your love, thank you for your support, and more importantly, thank you for allowing me to bring these victims' stories to each and every one of you advocating for each of these victims. God bless you, God bless America, and more importantly, God bless our victims. Hey guys, Bullhorn Betty here. Thanks for coming to my channel to watch this. We're gonna be updating you on the Madeline Soto case. We have some information coming out courtesy of Court TV, Vinnie Politan, thank you so much. They were able to get the other two audios. So now we have all three audios of 911 calls related to the disappearance of Madeline Soto. And I want you guys to check out this discussion that I had about this very thing. I want you guys to hear the recordings in their entirety, recording one, recording two, and recording three, and then we'll get started. 911, what's the location of your emergency? And do you need police, fire, or medical? Uh, police, possibly. I'm reporting a missing child. Okay. And the child that you're trying to report missing, are you calling on behalf of the, of the parent? Yes, yes, on behalf of the mother. She's missing. Okay. Okay. And then, so, and ma'am... How old is the child? She's and could I go ahead and get her name? Yes, it's... And is she white, black, or Hispanic? She's white. Okay, blonde, and... Dirty blonde hair, blue eyes. Okay, hold on with me here. And then what color shirt and pants was she last seen wearing? Um, hold on, let me ask. Then, um, what color shirt and, like, what was she last wearing? Um, hold on, uh, we're finding out. Okay, and then how long has it been, though, since you guys have last seen her? Since this morning. She was dropped off, um, at school this morning, and apparently she never showed up. We called, um, everyone we knew, no one seen her. Okay, and then so, ma'am, I just want to confirm though, was she last seen from this address? Oh. Is this where you guys last saw her? No, 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 no. Um, she was last seen at the church next to Hunters Creek Middle School. I think it's called Peace Church. I'm not sure of the exact address. Uh, she was wearing a dark green hoodie, I believe. What is the name of the church? Uh, I think it's called, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's called Peace Church. It's the one right next to Hunters Creek Middle School. It's the, well, no, no, no. Got it. It's across the street from it? Um, I, I believe so, yeah. There's there's two. I just forgot about the other one. It's not Focal Point Church. It's, um... Well, is it Peace United Methodist Church? Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. It's that one. Okay, is she diagnosed with any medical mental conditions at all? Um, I know she takes medication for ADHD. Hi, um, I called not that long ago reporting a missing child. I just wanted to know how long the cops are going to take to get here. Okay, hold on, let me open up the call and let's see. The call is still currently pending to have the deputies respond out there, but we don't have any available deputies. We still have the call up though, holding. 
Okay, so so no one's on their way yet? Not yet, no. Mm, does it take long for them to respond to the call? If there's a big emergency in the area um, and there's nobody, there's no units available, they put the calls on hold. But as soon as one becomes available, they respond to the next pressing call. Okay. Yeah, uh, we just need one here urgently. So I understand. Um, we still area. have the call. We still have the call holding. Y yes. Yep. We still have the call holding for them. I'll go ahead and update them with the information. All right. Thank you. Because this happened yeah. very recently, so we just want to get everyone here. She's been working since 8 a.m., so we want to get everything done as soon as possible to try to find her. I, I understand. Do you need please fire medical? No, it's not a medical issue. We we have a missing child since this morning. We already called three times, and the police didn't show up yet. Yes, ma'am. I see it right here for you. Uh, for yes, ma'am. I see it. This is waiting for a deputy to respond. They haven't. They haven't come here yet. I, I'm aware, ma'am. I see it. It's waiting for a deputy to respond. You're waiting for a deputy to respond? Yes, ma'am. And how long what do we need to wait? It's, it's a child missing. I understand that, ma'am, but I'm just not able to give out ETA. I, I'm, I don't know when they'll be there. So how long do we need to wait? This is I, an emergency. Ma'am, we, we have the information, but it just it, they're, they're trying to get there someone as soon as possible. So this is not important for you guys? Really? Ma'am, we're very busy in the area. Look, I understand uh, they'll be there as soon as they can, okay? Mm -hmm. We've covered the case of Madeline Soto. She disappeared on the same exact day that Sebastian Rogers disappeared, um, except she disappeared from Kissimmee, Florida, which is about two and a half hours away from where I sit right now, right? It was a very hard case for me to listen to. This man right here is Stefan Stearns, and he is behind bars. He, was, he went behind bars on February 28th, two days after she disappeared for stuff that they found in his phone. Nobody has been arrested for this young girl's disappearance or untimely demise at the hands, we believe, of him. Well, a lot of people had a lot of questions related to whether or not Jen Soto was involved. Jennifer Soto is Madeline's mother because this stuff, the abuse, went all the way back until this young girl was eight years old. Eight years old. So how, you know, a lot of people can't quite figure out how in the world her mother did not know a thing. Um, nobody's been charged. We don't know when there's going to be a charge. But we are starting to get some information related to the 911 calls. And I'm watching this, this video from Court TV with Vinny Politan, somebody else had released the third video. So I, a friend had sent it to me, and I heard the third video of the grandmother calling in. And it was, I, I was like, well, where's the other two, two recordings? She says that this is her third time calling. Where's the other two? Because everybody was asking, why wasn't Jen or why wasn't Stefan? Weren't, weren't they the ones that called 911? They didn't call. And so my question was, well, this is number three. How do we know they didn't call? We don't have, you know, recording one or two. Well, guess what? One in two recordings of them calling law enforcement has been received, and Court TV has it. I'm going to play it for you guys in just a second so we can have a discussion about it. But I've got to tell you, none of them are talking about the freaking elephant in the room. They're talking about how these people are saying and, and how, these, how the people are. Like, this is a, the aunt and the grandmother. They, don't, they, are not, they weren't even in the house that morning, and they're analyzing them. I, like, I am, like, coming through the phone like screaming at whatever law enforcement agency this is because who the hell needs to call three times when you have a missing freaking kid? Like, <laughs> like they're talking about the grandmother and the aunt and I'm sitting here like, like fire and smoke coming out of my ears and my mouth over the law enforcement. Like I'm just like floored that we have a law enforcement body here that when you call 911 for a missing child, you better hurry up and wait. Are you freaking kidding me? You do not have enough law enforcement agencies or agents to go out and field these calls? That to me is screaming major problems. So I don't know what's going on out there in Osceola County or Orange County here in the state of Florida, but get your shit together. I never want to hear no stuff like that again. Not in my community. That is, I am so angry about that. You're going to be angry too.
Y'all are going to be angry too. Let's listen. All right, let's listen now. Also, 911 calls. Let's take a listen to the first one, and then I want to get your analysis based on. And this is coming from Court TV, guys. From this call. Let's listen. 911, what's the location of your emergency? And do you need police, fire, or medical? Uh, police, possibly. I'm reporting a missing child. Okay. And the child that you're trying to report missing, are you calling on behalf of the of the parent? Yes, yes, on behalf of the mother. She's like, okay. Okay. And then, so, and ma'am, how old is the child? She's... And could I go ahead and get her name? Yes, it's... white black or hispanic she's white okay blonde, and dirty blonde hair blue eyes okay hold on with me here and then what color shirt and pants was she last seen wearing um hold on let me ask then um what color shirt and like what was she last wearing <laughs> hold on oh we're finding out Okay, and then how long has it been though since you guys have last seen her? Since this morning. She was dropped off um, at school this morning and apparently she never showed up. We called um, everyone we knew, no one seen her. Okay, and then so ma'am, I just want to confirm though, was she last seen from this address? That's where you guys last saw her? No, 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 no. Um, she was last seen at the church next to Hunters Creek Middle School. I think it's called Peace Church. I'm not sure of the exact address. Uh, she was wearing a dark green hoodie, I believe. What is the name of the church? Uh, I think it's called, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's called Peace Church. It's the one right next to Hunters Creek Middle School. It's the, well, no, no, no. It's, yeah, it's across the street Middle. from it? Um... I, I believe so, yeah. There's there's two. I just forgot about the other one. It's not Focal Point Church. It's, um... Well, is it Peace United Methodist Church? Yeah, so you want to hear something that's really bizarre about this very first call is um, one thing on here is the, the um, level of unconcern. Like, they didn't see the, um, the concern, the level of concern at this is not uh, very good. You know what I'm saying? Like they are not concerned about this whatsoever. It doesn't appear that they have any um, issues whatsoever with her missing. She's 13 years old and she's missing. So it's like they're saying that she hasn't been seen since eight o'clock this morning. The call is not coming in from her mother. It's not coming in from uh, Stefan. It's coming in from her her sister and this is call one and they still yet no urgency at all let's keep going medical mental conditions at all um i know she takes medication for adhd didn't know this was a i should have known we got children i'll start with you what are Listen you hearing this. in this call? What what um, strikes your interest? What do you what do you think is significant here? Well, the first thing that struck me was just how calm the caller was. You know, you hate to judge people react in these situations, but there's a missing child. because of Florida law. We don't know who made the nine one one call, but I've been told it is a family member, possibly uh, Jen Soto's sister. Um, I was surprised just how calm. Um, the caller was uh, about a missing child. That was first. Second, you can hear the same story, right? Stephen Stern's same story that he dropped her off at that church. That was the last time uh, she had been seen. Um, so the story obviously was relayed to the family members, uh, the same story that he relayed to us in that interview. How about this? One thing that I, and I want to get both of your reactions to this. The operator says, what was she wearing? And the caller says, Jen, what was she wearing? And then they... Does that, does that make anybody wonder? 
like holy smokes, right? She looks over at Jen. Now, Jen has the mom been, no, 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 the mom has not been arrested. The mom hasn't been arrested at all. And neither has, nobody has been arrested for this girl. The only reason why this man right here is arrested and in this photo right here is because he had images of her on his phone in very, in a dis, you guys get it. I'm not going to, I don't have to, I don't have to explain it on here. And we're not talking about a small amount of photos. We're talking about like over 400 images since she was eight years old and the day that he that she disappeared listen to this the day that she disappeared he factory reset his phone and tried to say oh i accidentally factory reset my phone how do you act have you ever tried to factory reset your phone i'm, I'm just asking for those i guarantee half of the people in here are saying i don't even know how to begin to re factory reset my phone so it actually takes some time to go in there to even find out where to factory reset it and then hit a button. Then you got to hit another 18 million buttons to make sure that you really want to factory reset your phone. But he somehow accidentally did this. It didn't work. It didn't work. They were able to find all of these images, some of them all dating all the way back until 2019. Again, when she was eight years old. It's very, very upsetting. It's, it's highly disturbing to think that, um, you know, she was being abused in that manner. And a lot of people don't believe that Jen knew nothing. I'm actually, believe it or not, I know a lot of people don't agree with me, but I'm on a different um, level. I, I don't believe Jen had any knowledge that this was going on. I believe she had red flags about uh, Stefan. I believe that there were some things going on behind the doors, but I don't think she knew this. And there's the, the this, this is the reason why. My experience is different than some other people's experiences in the fact that um, in my experience, people, how do I, how do I explain this? In, in my experience, um, well, some of them, about 50-50, when we were doing the Paola Miranda Rosa case, we thought that um, she was abducted, okay? And so she was an older lady, so we thought that she went into the whole, um, you know, ST type of trade. Um, she was forced into, that's what we believe. So we brought in uh, a lady that uh, wrote a book and everything like that to understand the whole SA you know, aspect of it and how, you know, this works and what happens. And she was explaining it to me. And she was one that was, you know, uh, groomed by a younger, from a younger age and stuff like that. And she was terrified to tell her story. I never thought people would be so uh, terrified of their, you know, not to say anything to any anybody. But there were even people in my on my YouTube that called into my show and basically said that. Um, uh, what do they say on the on the show? They basically said um, they they went years years upon years without telling their family what what kind of abuses that they were undergoing. And and when she finally did tell her mom. She said her mom never knew. Uh, all those years, you know, she thought her mom knew. N you know, you don't know what that predator is saying to that child to keep them quiet. You, we don't know. Um, did she know? I, I really, truly don't know. I pray to God she didn't because, you know, I don't want to think of a, a parent. And one of the other reasons why I didn't think she knew is because everything that I've seen in her past before Stefan she seemed like a loving, caring mother, you know, even with Stefan, the, the photos, the, the trips to Disney and stuff like that. She seemed like she really enjoyed her family. Um, and it seemed like she was in this delusion of this family. You know what I'm saying? So I really do believe that this whole family um, was her delusion. And then, of course, she had a little bit of mental illness herself. She was taking medication and not only was she taking medication, um, you know, this medication was making her sleep an awful lot. We also learned by that um, whatever doohickey it is, um, that uh, affidavit, that it appeared that these, that the photos and images that he was taking and putting on his phone 
we're in a very specific time frame. It was really interesting because we're like, why, why June? You know, it seemed like everything was happening in June and August. And somebody then brought it up to my attention. Those are summer months. So I honestly believe that Jen was actually relying on Stefan to take care of her daughter while she was working during the summer months. And I think that gave him full and utter access and control over her. And I don't know what he, he obviously said something. It's this girl lost her life because of something. And I really truly believe it's because she told him she's had enough and she was going to tell. He was out the door. It sounded like Jen was over. They were split up. And even her grandmother said, you know, he doesn't live in the house and one wanted to know why, uh, what did he say? He doesn't live in the house, but wanted to know, you, you know, he just happened to come over that weekend. And I think everybody thought he just came over that weekend because it was her birthday. And he had been in her life since she was, you know, seven, eight years old. So nobody was probably thinking, but from what it sounds like, it sounds like he didn't live there. And even with the affidavit coming from law enforcement and everything else like that, think about it he was um he was every time we heard anything he was coming in he was never really going out did you notice that so it seemed like he wasn't staying there that he actually got there that morning according to the affidavit but it's confusing because we're not getting any information anytime anybody is asking anybody any information about this case law enforcement shutting them down yeah, the state attorney basically said just the other day on a live uh, interview that he's going to be 